This is the worst. The 90s were full of wacky toy trends. You got Beanie Babies, Pogs, Tamagotchis. But one of the strangest ones to me were Furbies. I hated these things. And let me tell you why. Imagine this. You're 10 years old and sound asleep in bed. You're enjoying a peaceful slumber. But then you hear it. You wake up startled. What? What was that? You hear the shrill voice again. <laughs> Your heart starts pounding faster. You hear it once more. <laughs> and to your dread, you see it. Lifeless eyes in the corner of your room, staring back at you. And you feel its glaze, piercing the very essence of your soul. <laughs> yep. These little monsters. As a kid, I hated these things. Both of my sisters got one of their own back in the day, and I was immediately creeped out. They looked like ripoffs of Gizmo from Gremlins, but nowhere near as cute. They had these big, freakish eyes and a weird beak. And the worst part of all? They spoke like some kind of demon possessed robot. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not care for them. Many years later, I discovered that there was, in fact, a Furby movie. And it was bad. <laughs> this film was a glorified commercial, plain and simple. It exists for the sole reason of pushing products to its viewers. It's pretty rare to find a toy line that also has a cartoon series of substance. To many toy companies, it doesn't matter if the show is good or not, as long as it advertises their products. Now, there are exceptions, but the majority of these shows are simply phoning it in. And that's very much so the case with Furby Island. Are you a Furby? Furby! This is such a bad movie. None of the characters are likable, their designs are terrible, and their movement cycles are trash. Seriously, it looks like they all just shit their pants. So I did some research about this movie and discovered a few interesting things. First of all, this movie was a failed attempt of achieving a Furby cartoon show. According to my sources, the movie aired on Nickelodeon back in 2005 and actually did quite well in the ratings. The executives and Nick even greenlit the show for development, though it never came to fruition. There was apparently a change of command at Nick in 2006, and the new president threw the show's production off track, so much so that it never recovered. Also, according to a source, Frederator Studios was the one charged with making the series. Wait a second. For those who don't know, Frederator is my YouTube network, so this is kind of funny to me. I actually reached out to my contacts from the network to ask them about the show, but none of them knew anything about it. So maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Who knows? All we can confirm is that it never happened, and I am quite certain that Hasbro hates that. The studio behind the movie itself was DRTV Productions. I checked out their filmography, and they barely have anything. Also, look at this bullshit. 7.2 on IMDb. Yeah, that's a load of crap. More like a 3.2 out of a thousand. There aren't really any people worth mentioning who worked or starred in this movie, so I'll leave them out of this. They have already suffered enough, but our suffering is just about to begin. Let's talk about the movie. And by the way, this is the best version I could find, so I apologize about the quality. Shut up! So the film starts off with a plane soaring through the sky. As we get our intro credits, we then find ourselves inside the plane as we're introduced to our main character, Maddie. Wow, Dr. Conquest is truly amazing. Did you hear that, Ty? What? I hate her design. Like, a lot. She has these massive cheeks, but a very small mouth that looks somewhat sunken in. And her body is even crazier. She's got these long arms and legs and a torso that's constantly bending at bizarre angles. It looks like the poor girl has scoliosis. And look at her joints. Woody called. He wants his arms back. Somebody's poisoned the water hole. 
So Maddie is a nerd who believes in the supernatural. She likes to indulge herself in this fantasy by chatting with like-minded people online and watching her favorite hero, Clayton from Tarzan. Where are the gorillas? Oh, I I'm sorry. I, I meant Dr. Conquest. Her brother Ty thinks she's an idiot. He's right. Not that quack again. Why don't you get some real friends and watch a real show? Boom. Roasted. We then learn that Maddie and her brother are the children of nature explorers. That's why they're on the plane to begin with. Kind of a wild thornberries thing going on here. Though I do want to point out how unsecure this plane is. Like they got books and shelves and couches and computers and none of it strapped down. And when you see the plane in the opening credits going straight into the sky, well, the, 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 the cargo should be going everywhere. So the family arrives onto the island. Maddie's parents go off to look for a plant. Also, Maddie's mom has a very strange face. Like, it sticks out and looks like the camera is using a fish-eyed lens. What? But we are Maddie. One of the worst things about this movie are the walk cycles. I mean, Maddie's long legs look like they're alien, and they got Ty's stubby legs that can barely keep up. Uh, what is it, anyway? You probably wouldn't know what it was if you fell over it. Ow! So Maddie and Ty set off to explore and find merchandise. They then stumble across the temple from Dinosaur Island and decide to go in. I'm telling you, Maddie, Mom and Dad are going to be so mad. So they're in the temple, and while they're there, they discover ancient drawings of people playing with Furbies. Which begs the question, where are those people? The funny thing is, and I watched the entire movie by this point, is that we never see a tribe of people on the island. So what happened to them? Oh my god, the Furbies ate them. So the temple begins to fall apart, and Maddie just straight up leaves her brother behind. Maddie? Don't you dare leave me in here! Maddie? No! So her brother's trapped, and Maddie takes off to go find help. We then get this wonderful sequence where Maddie just runs all over the forest in random directions. Fast as fuck, boy. I must have gone in the wrong direction. Where are mom and dad? Where's the plane? Where's Ty? Where's Ty? He's trapped in the temple. That's the entire reason why you ran off to go find help. God, you're stupid. So at this point, Maddie is completely lost. And then they show up. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Real talk, if that was me, I would scream and punch that thing in the face. Yeah! This is where things get really weird. Apparently, the Furbies have magical powers and can read your mind and emotions. Kind of invasive, if you ask me. Elo. So yeah, there's a village of Furbies, and there are two in particular who are main characters. They've got names, but I can't remember them. So that one's Peepoo and Chonkers. <laughs> you should really watch where you're going. Hmm? So the Furbies take Maddie back to the temple, and Ty somehow got out on his own. And here's the best part. The movie doesn't even tell us how. Like, even Maddie is curious, and Ty is like, wouldn't you like to know? Ty, I can't believe you left me in that dark cave. But how did you get Wouldn't you like huh? to know? Yeah, I, I would. Chonker and Ty, for whatever reason, have some kind of a standoff and burp back and forth to each other. <laughs> then we're somehow instantly back at the Furby camp, where we get this weird-ass song, as the Furbies sing in their native tongue. So Peepoo and Chonker, <laughs> oh my god, their names, I, I don't know why I call them this. 
So Pipu and Chonker go back to the plane with the kids. Maddie then has the brilliant idea of revealing the existence of Furbies and posting online where they live. Cause f them. Didn't find the tortoiseart, but something much more interesting. Small furry beings never seen anything like them. The Furbies then start to watch television and begin quoting random shit. And I mean really random. Don't send me away. I I'll cut up all my credit cards. Also, some of the faces from this scene are terrifying. It's time to play. Press your dot. Ready, ladies! <laughs> <laughs> we then get this wonderful scene where Maddie's parents come back with a plant, but can't get it through the door. But to me, it sounds like something else. Here, I'm gonna blur this out, and you tell me. Whoa! Oh, this thing is squirrely! Allie! <gasps> Allie! Can you give me a hand? This is a little... Mom! Dad, you won't I believe who it's <laughs> Oh, Help! Honey. Mom! Can you just pull? Just pull. Ow! I, I know it's sharp and, and, and stinks. I, I don't understand. I've never seen anything like this in my life. You're going to bring this in here? Yes, it's fantastic, isn't it? I don't know why you had to bring back this big of a specimen, George. Somehow, the Furbies get stuck in a jar and start to freak out. And then Maddie gets a headache. I guess Maddie and Peepoo have a. <laughs> I'm 30 years old. Why am I laughing at Peepoo? <laughs> I suppose Maddie and Peepoo have some kind of psychic link for one another. Huh. Maybe it's like the aliens from Independence Day. So it's the next day, and Maddie and Ty head back to the Furby village. They play with Peepoo and Chonkers for a bit, but then Chonkers goes missing. They set out to look for him, but stumble across the most terrifying creature on Earth. The White Man! So it turns out that Dr. Conquest got Maddie's message about the Furbies, cause she's a f***ing idiot. You can actually mark the moment where Maddie realizes that she screwed up. The Furbies aren't man-eating. They're wonderful. I... I... <gasps> I... Uh... Let's talk about Dr. Conquest. So unlike Ty and Maddie, who have small mouths, Mr. Conquest here has a massive mouth. It is huge. He's constantly showing his teeth and gums. It, it, it is very strange. And why the hell is the camera so close to his face? <gasps> well, my young conquering hero, time's a-wasting. Lead me to this Furby paradise. So Peepoo telepathically tells Maddie that Dr. Conquest is evil. And Maddie starts to take back everything she said about the Furbies. I think there's been a mistake. What kind of mistake? Oh, uh, well, you know that thing I emailed you about? You know, that thing I thought was a, a, a Furby. It wasn't. <laughs> Go to hell. But it's too late. Conquest already trapped Chonkers, and Ty freaks out. Oh, uh, there are definitely Furbies on this island, mates. You see? I already got me one. Eon! No! I like to imagine that Conquest is just an obsessed toy collector who wants all the Furby merchandise. Just Eon! tell me where the rest of them are, right? No! No! Yes. Ho 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 ho! Folks, I think we found ourselves a new meme. It's like the opposite of Monkey Moses. No! No! Yes. We then get this lovely sequence where all of the characters are running, and each and every one of them look like they just shit their pants. So Ty and Maddie arrive at the Furby village and try to get the Furby's attention, but they won't shut up. Elo, you need to tell them we all need to go to the plane right now. It's not safe here. Hold it! But the Furby elder screams like a Nazgul and gets everybody's attention. So Dr. Conquest finds the Furby village and starts to capture them all. 
oh my God, this this Furby just failed immediately. <laughs> I'm going to save the day, womp. I, I don't think Dr. Conquest even made eye contact. He just knew it was going to be there. You have become a nuisance, my little Sheila. Here's a touching story. Once upon a time you died, and I lived happily ever after. The end. So Ty gets caught in a trap, and then Maddie gets surrounded by the villains. They all jump at her at once, miss, and somehow crush Peepoo. Are you okay, boss? Oh, fine! Get off me, you idiot. I like how Dr. Conquest just throws around the lifeless body like it's a beanbag. No, give her back! You silly little girl. Here, we can study this one in the lab. No! So Maddie gets caught in a trap as the villains get away. She can't get out because she's an idiot. I swear, her, her noodle body could easily fit between those cracks. But instead, she breaks out by swinging the cage at a sharp leaf that cuts open the cage? <laughs> okay. Maddie! Help! Uh, Hi, I'm coming! That's what she said. So Maddie and Ty, who somehow freed himself too, go to the rescue and try to help the Furbies. I'll take that. What? No! You can't do this! No! You, you can't do this! Why does it sound like he's about to cry? And once again, he moves like he shit his pants. Come back here. You, you can't take my babies. You can't do what I tell you. Maddie then tricks Dr. Conquest into following her into the temple. I know you're in here with those babies, girly. And I'm not leaving till I get him. And you. So Maddie activates her trap card, and Dr. Conquest is stuck in a pit, and Maddie straight up leaves him to die. You can't leave me here. You, you, you can't. Williamson? Williamson, I'll get you for this! Oh, lend us your shovel so I can dig your grave! So it turns out that Dr. Conquest and his goons get arrested instead. Peepoo comes back to life, and then Maddie's parents are told about the Furbies, which they take the news very well. Our family just grew by a hundred or so. I know. We then get this stupid message about family values, cause it's Hasbro, they gotta do that. And then the family decides to take the Furbies with them. Not sure why, the Furbies have a village on the island, but whatever. Yeah! We then get a final bonus scene as Peepoo tells Maddie that Furbies live across the globe and that Maddie's family needs to go out and find them and collect them and start a cartoon series and continue the adventure. And guess what? It never happened. Thank God. I just bagged the world's fattest man. All right, it's time to go over my five points. First, the story. <laughs> Barely anything happens. It's like a boring version of the Wild Thornberries. Most of the time, the characters just stand or sit around doing nothing except play with Furbies. Jeez, I wonder why the movie did that. Also, the characters are very unlikable. They whine, they cry, they complain. None of them have any redeeming values. And our main character is just an obsessed girl that destroys everything she touches. Little brother, she gets him stuck in a temple. The Furby Village? She posts online where they live and people find them. Dr. Conquest? Well, she puts him in a pit. Seriously, stay away from this chick. She's bad luck itself. She just touched your arm. Quick, amputate! Next, editing. There are scenes that go on for far too long. The song in particular was hard to watch. It's just mindless blabber as characters dance around. I was looking at my watch and wondering when it was going to end. After that, there's the voice acting. It's rough to say the least. I don't think the kids who voice Maddie or Ty were experienced voice actors. The, the way they showed emotions was hilarious. The scene in particular where Ty freaks out over his Furby cracks me up. <laughs> he screams out like he lost a game of Fortnite. Yeah! 
Then there's the dialogue. The character dialogue was very clunky. Maddie and Ty had that sibling rivalry going on, but none of it sounded natural. It felt more like a sitcom. Ah, don't do that! Gotcha! And finally, the animation. I truly cannot stand the designs of the characters. The Furbies are based on the toy, so I'm okay with ignoring that, despite their weird, prehensile ears. The humans, on the other hand, are god-awful. I've seen a lot of bad character designs, but Maddie is one of the worst. Why'd they make her so long and lanky? She looks like that one weird alien from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And when her lanky body moves, it looks ridiculous. There are also moments where her torso bends over at impossible angles and looks very uncanny. But that's a common problem with this movie. Uncanny movement, uncanny bodies, and very uncanny faces. What is wrong with your face? So now we get to a new segment of my videos. How to improve the movie. I realized a few months ago that I just rip on stuff without offering constructive criticism, so this segment should hopefully fix that. The first thing I would do is overhaul the story. You can keep the traveling family premise, that's alright. It's a good way to open up possibilities. But please, change the family dynamic. Give mom and dad more personality than just being the boring parental figures. They barely do anything in the movie except fly the plane. For Ty, make him more likable. Instead of being the younger brother who is constantly berating his sister, make him a geek who wants nothing to do with nature. That way, when he finally befriends a Furby, he can come around and see things from his sister's perspective. For Maddie, I would make her the younger sister. Someone who is wide-eyed and optimistic about the world and what could be in it. When it's an older person, it's easier to dismiss their wonder as immature, but for a little girl, it's more acceptable and cute. It also makes it more believable for people to ignore her findings. She could be like, Mom, Dad, I found a magical village of creatures called Furbies. And they'd be all like, Oh, that's nice, dear. Brush your teeth. And essentially ignore her. After trials and tribulations, the family would eventually come around and believe her. Maybe even come to her rescue with some other Furbies. I think that would be a better story arc. It also makes more sense with the family values and being more together. And for the villain, just get rid of him. Instead, put in a monster that preys on Furbies. That would fit much better with the fantasy theme of the island. And for the character designs, <laughs> just burn the originals. Start completely over. I hate the way they look. Do something more cartoony instead, uh, maybe in 2D or something. The 3D computer animation is not doing this film any favors and puts the characters in Uncanny Valley with their stupid movement and facial expressions. So, where did you hear the name Furby then? I read about it. I, uh, on your website. Really? So, yeah. That's Furby Island, a failed attempt at making a cheap, boring cartoon to promote a toy line. Now, I have no problem with companies trying to make shows about their products, but at least put some effort into it. Friendship is Magic and TMNT were able to do that, and it makes it more enjoyable for everybody. Also, folks will be more likely to support your product that way too. Don't do this. Don't ever do this. <sighs> That is going to haunt my dreams.